Remember, a force is a push or pull. And we talked about the different types of forces. And if we look at a force, it's really made of two things. First, it's made of the force indicates a push or pull, and forces are measured in newtons. And one newton is the amount of force needed to move one kilogram, one meter. Um, when we study forces, there's a couple things about forces we need to know. The first thing is they have a size. Some forces are bigger than others. Or that is called the magnitude of the force. So the more force you apply, the higher the force's magnitude. So the more newtons. Um, and if you think about it, just like if you're opening a door to the classroom or something. Let's say the, the door is stuck. You have to apply a stronger force to open it than if the door is not stuck. Um, so the difference in forces is the magnitude, the size of the force is called magnitude. That's how strong the force is. There's also a direction of force. So forces include size and direction. If we look at the pool balls here, again, so when I hit this, this white ball, the cue ball, I am providing a force on this stick, and that force hits this ball. And this ball is going to hit these balls, applying a force to them. So the force is going this direction, in this case. And we talked about friction as the force that goes the opposite, the direction of motion. So the friction from the felt of the surface, it's really opposed, it's going the opposite direction. It's going this way. So we can demonstrate, we can visualize these forces using what's called a force diagram. A force diagram is used to diagram forces. That's what it says it is. So it's a visualized forces. Uh, it's a picture in which we show the size of the force, or the magnitude of the force, and the direction of the force. So I'm going to say, I'm going to draw this cue ball yeah, over here. We're going to sit right here. And here's the felt table it's sitting on. Okay, so I'm going to draw it the same direction. I have the cue stick. stick. This is the cue ball. The force I'm applying is called thrust in this case. It's going this direction. However, we're going to look at the other force that opposes that direction of motion called friction from the felt. And that goes the other direction. So thrust and this is force is obviously acting on this pool ball. And normal forces are actually pushing up. So the pool table is exerting a force on the pool ball that opposes the direction of the force of gravity. So there's a normal force. Normal force. This is the force that the pool, the, the table's surface exerts on the pool ball. Then obviously we have gravity. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Remember, weight is a force. If I'm looking at F, remember, this is Newton's second law of motion. F equals ma, mass times acceleration. If we're looking at weight, weight is a force. So when you step on a scale, you are mass and acceleration, times acceleration. So weight is equal to the mass times acceleration of gravity which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so to get the mass, I'm gonna just put this on a, it's called a scale. This, But when you use a, a electronic balance, you have to clear it. So right now it's taking a, a arbitrary measurement. So right now it's on zero, okay? It's a little tricky to get the mass of a pool ball like this because it's gonna roll, it might 
I mean, might be a little tricky, it's rolling. So one way to take its measurement is put the cup on first. Cup, 92 grams, this cup. I don't, I don't want that. So here's what you do is you click the, the button that says tear, T-A-R-E. So that's kind of, it, what it does, it zeroes out this measurement. So I'm going to click that and now it's zero. So now it's not measuring the cup. It's just gonna measure the ball. And now if I put the ball in the cup, I can get an accurate measurement because it's not rolling around. So this cue ball weighs 15.5 grams. New newtons. Okay, so we're gonna say the A force diagram. Okay, we have forces from all different sides here. We have force going this way, the thrust force, that's 200 newtons we're gonna say. So I change this. We're gonna say the friction is 10 newtons going this way, the opposites, opposite. 152 newtons is the gravitational force, which is really its weight. And the normal force is 152 newtons. So if we look at, let's just look at these two first. We're gonna look at the gravitational force and the normal force. We have 10 newtons of friction. We're gonna say we have 152 newtons of gravity, 152 newtons normal force. These forces are equal, normal, notice. So these two forces, the size of the force, the magnitude's equal. So in other words, they're balanced. So when the magnitude is equal and they're going the opposite directions, which they are, this is going up, this one's going down, that's balanced. So this is balanced. These two are balanced. They cancel each other out. So in other words, that cue ball is not going to go up or down, right? So there's not no acceleration going up or down, no vertical acceleration because the forces are balanced. So this is an example of balanced forces right here. Now, if I look at the horizontal direction, thrust is going this way, friction's going this way. These are not balanced forces. They're not equal. This is 200, this is 10. Unbalanced forces. So in unbalanced forces, there is movement, there is acceleration. The object's going to move. If these were both 200 newtons, the, the ball would not move at all. It wouldn't go up or down, it wouldn't go sideways. They're not balanced, however. So this force is greater than this one. So if I want to figure out the total net force, I, if they're going opposite directions, which they are, this one's going this way, this one's going this way, you're going to subtract the forces. The net force is like the total force acting on the cue ball. So the net force, I'm going to take 200 minus 10, which is 190 newtons. So that's the first part of this. Now I'm going to figure out what direction the force is going. You're going to take the larger of the two forces. So this is the largest. It's going to the left. So then when you draw this out, when I'm writing the answer, I'm going to draw an arrow, actually, to the left. So this is the overall net force on this cue ball. 190 newtons to the left. And this is how you'd write it. So this is an example of a force diagram. Sometimes you don't see all four forces acting on the object. Sometimes it's just the horizontal forces. So let's look at another example. This is another example of a force diagram. In this case, it's not showing all of the forces, it's just showing the horizontal forces. These are balanced, notice. So right now, this is what, I'm not, I don't have, I'm not measuring the actual force, but they, we know they're balanced because the cue ball's not moving. So these are the, the equal magnitude, are going opposite directions, so, balanced forces. The object is not going to accelerate, it's not moving. So the net force then is zero. And there's no arrow because it's not moving. So when you have balanced forces, 
they cancel each other out. The magnitude cancel each other, cancels each other out. You've got the same on both sides, it's like tug of war. If you got, if one side's pulling the same force the other side is, the rope is not gonna move, right? So the overall force is zero. I'm trying to hit the cue ball and there's somebody else that's hitting the cue ball at the same time. So let's say there's going to be two forces of thrust applied to this cue ball. So let's say each one is 20 newtons here, and this one's 20 newtons. If I want to figure out the overall, the net force again, the total force on this side is 40 newtons. The force over here is 10. So they're going opposite directions, so you subtract again. So 10, I mean, so 40 minus 10 is 30 newtons. So the net force, N, just big N. And this side is the larger force, and the arrow is going to the left. So it's again 30 newtons to the left. We have kind of a simulation of this. There's no friction, there's no felt. All right. Um, and let's say we're going to have. force friction and there's two two of us are hitting this cue ball okay so we have two forces of thrust and one is 10 newtons of thrust and the other is 15 newtons and there's no force going this way so sometimes there won't even be anything written here this is hypothetical sometimes it, there, it might be just say zero going this way or nothing so if the arrow is the first thing, you, so when you look at this force diagram, we've got to figure out the arrows going the same direction. Here they are. So this just makes sense. We want to figure out what's the net force, what's the total force on this cue ball? Well, it's 10 plus 15, all right? So 25 newtons. So when you solve these force diagrams, there's a few steps to keep in mind. So the first thing you want to do is you, you first want to figure out what direction the arrows are going. Okay, so you have to look at the diagram. Is, uh, if the arrows are going the same direction, you're going to add the numbers. If they're going opposite directions, you're going to subtract. Like this, or like this. That means you add the strength, the size of the forces. You add the forces together. Add forces. Which makes sense. Right? If the arrows are going opposite directions, or you can notice this, they're going opposite directions, you're going to subtract the forces. that's going to give you the magnitude of the force. Okay. Obviously, if they're just going one direction, that's also going to be the direction of the force, the net force. Okay. If they're going opposite directions, then the arrow, the direction of the force is going to go in the direction that the larger force is applied. So, okay, so the direction, this is calculating the net force, all right? So net force, if you want to figure out the total force on the object, first thing I'd figure out, are, what are the, if we're looking at a diagram, force diagram, then you have to figure out are the arrows going the same way or not. If they are going the same way, you just add the forces up, and the direction's gonna be that direction. It's easy. If they're going opposite directions, you have to subtract the forces. And the overall direction of the net force is going to go in the same direction that the larger force is going. 